Hello and welcome. This is On The Record. Now forget the rigid corporate ladder. Today the most attractive and best places to work allow for free flowing ideas and career paths often not stuck behind a desk. And the creative industry is smack in the middle of that and blazing a trail in the industrial age. Businesses were built on strict hierarchy. Today we're in the digital age. We're witnessing a major shift. The creative economy stands out as a shining light. In Britain, for instance, 1.8 million fast emerging jobs are in those creative occupations from advertising to computer programming, acting and singing or developing video games and apps. So as the Joy of Jazz Festival starts off in Johannesburg, let's examine the music industry and its sustainability. After all, it seems unlikely that the world, no matter how advanced, will ever tire of music. So we're in conversation today with American singer and actor Rassan Patterson and South African singer and songwriter RJ Benjamin. Rassan to my left, RJ to my right. Welcome to you both and welcome. Thank you for having us. And uh, you'll be performing before Rassan at uh, the festival. Right, I'm honored, by the way. And <laughs> when, when is that? Is that uh, Saturday. Friday, Saturday? Saturday. Saturday yes. evening, okay. Yeah. So let me ask the question. I, I said nobody will ever tire of music, but will musicians ever become obsolete, do you think? Right, mm. let me start with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think musicians will ever become obsolete. I do believe that it all depends on the individual person, how much they can actually stand or take as far as what it really takes to have a career. And because the digital age has changed the music industry so much, it can be frustrating. Um, particularly if you're not a touring musician who tours regularly, you know, and if you don't write songs, it can be difficult to So make the money. physical presence of the person is still very much going to be pivotal in the music industry? I believe so. Um, of course, if you're not a producer or artist that does everything yourself, you're going to need assistance from musicians, mm -hmm. you know, singers. And Do you think it's made people who ordinarily would not have been musicians become musicians? I'm starting with you, Rasan. Oh, okay. And I, and I'll, I'll, I'll come to Was he just passing it on? Uh, I'm happy to answer, but uh, maybe we can share this one. Yeah, we can share. Cool. Uh, I, th I mean, I think that's always going to be a situation where you have, uh, because technology uh, has, ha has sort of lifted to a point where it's kind of leveled the playing field. You, uh, um, I mean, I know in South Africa we have people who've never, who can't afford instruments. Mm -hmm. They don't have anywhere where they can play instruments in townships. Mm -hmm. um, but they have an incredible musical imagination. They've got something there. And a lot of these DAWs, in other words, are programs that you, that you can create music on have given them a space to suddenly become musicians, mm -hmm. so to speak, and producers. So Is that a good or bad thing? It's, it's both. Yeah, uh, it exactly. comes with the good and bad. So, uh, because the, some of them are extremely talented. Black Coffee would have been one of them. Mm. He really would have. Mm. And he, he came from that, that group that I'm talking about. Mm. And, he's and today is one of the most celebrated. Absolutely. He's um, awesome. Yeah. I mean, there are some guys mm -hmm. Who, uh, <laughs> who, who get away with some interesting things, but, but uh, you know, m maybe do have that, that one hit, but unfortunately can't, mm. can't sort of sustain it beyond that, but yeah. uh, hopefully so they educate themselves. So you know, what, what are your thoughts on that, Rasan? I think the digital age has also sparked people's creativity. Like he mm. said, you know, it's given people a platform to tap, tap into their wildest dreams. You know, um, you can buy software. Even if you're not a musician, there's programming that can be done where you can create a song without having knowledge of musical theory or even the capability to play an instrument. So, you know, in a way, that is also something that could frustrate musicians that do play instruments because people who ha don't have a history of playing music, music can achieve success and surpass all the years of education and yeah. road travel that musicians and artists have. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe just to, it's another thought that popped in my head while you were talking. I mean, I know auto-tune has been around for ages, mm -hmm. you know, and there's different now forms of it. There's a thing called Melodyne, and every school program has its own sort of form of auto-tune. Um, and we have artists in this country that use it to death. Mm. Um, it, all, all throughout Africa, we do. Um, and, and sometimes coming across as legitimate vocalists. Right. Uh, um, but 
again, performance is such an, a, a vital part mm -hmm. of surviving in the music industry that there's been instances I know in South Africa where those artists, particularly if they come, come across as a, if, if they're trying to come through as a legitimate singer, where um, once they start performing on stage, the audience kind of goes, oh, it doesn't sound the same. Mm -hmm. And the bookings get less and less, and mm -hmm. eventually they, they vanish. It's happened and, on a few occasions. And, and there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, digitized sounds that we're hearing mm -hmm. in the music today. Um, what do you call it? Uh, synthesis or synthesizing. synthesizing. Yeah. So is that harming music or advancing music? And, and has digitization always been there from the very big, as in could music have ever done without some sort of machinery, some sort of digitization? I believe that when you look over the course of the progression of music, the digitization has always been present. You know, like the first thing that came to mind was Herbie Hancock's. I can't remember the name of that song. But Rocket. Rocket. Yeah. You I know, would love that, in <laughs> <laughs> that incorporated a lot of technical advancements in terms of sound. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been like that through the course of time. So I don't think synthesizers and the digitization of music is has affected it negatively because you can still make a great song using computers mm. you know what i mean you just have to have the ability to write a great song and sing it i mean you you've been great at um uh, at incorporating um thank you a lot of synthesizers into your music now, mm -hmm. which is still is still soul music yes exactly and i'm someone who enjoys all kinds of music if it's good so just like everyone else what in the world. What is your definition of good? Is, is it's, it, it's a personal how thing. How much of a purist are you? <laughs> I am that? a purist at heart. And I know that what's good to me may not be good to someone else. I know that what someone else thinks is great and fabulous, I may think is awful. You know, but mm -hmm. to each his own. You know, I really just focus on what I like, what inspires me, <laughs> what I do, you know. And I appreciate and respect the effort that people put into creating whatever art that they do. You know, everything isn't for everybody. You know, um, RJ, I was listening to an interview with um, uh, Pops Muhammad mm -hmm. about just how he recorded a particular record, and I think it had to do with um, the sand dance. A tra it's called a trance dance. Right. And he was speaking about how he literally left they left the, the recording equipment on for something like 20 hours, just listening to the sounds in right. the night and the air. So that then draws on to back to nature, uh, the, the, the pure angle of creating music. Right. And, and yet we're talking about the digital era. So are we also perhaps going into an era where we're going to take that which is grassroots, which is regarded as authentic, and then amplifying it by using technology, is it making it better? Well, I, I think that's always going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I also think like music seems to, to go in cycles. When, when house music, I mean, house music has infiltrated South Africa in a big way. When house music kind of like, like started to, to, to rear its head in the late 80s and, and 90s, uh, and then uh, everybody kind of just spoke about this loop. It's like a loop, and that mm. just repeats and repeats and repeats. There's a movement now that's that that's that I think started in the U.S., but it seems to be coming here mm -hmm. now, which is people are now moving back to like it's not a loop anymore. If you're doing a five-minute house track, the whole thing is basically live programming um, mm -hmm. as opposed to a loop, and um, and that's trying to incorporate technology, which lets you um, you synthesize drums, but still create um, uh, uh, how can I say a synergy between. Um, making it live, creative. Mm -hmm. um, so, in other words, on stage, yes, you've got this technology, but the technology is allowing you to almost play these instruments like it's a live right. instrument. There's a flow. Yes. Yeah. So, so, what is your thinking of if we're talking about the future of work and the music industry? And, and I mean, it's it's not something that we're looking at 20 years from now. It's, it's something that's here, that's upon us. Look. It, Within the context of how you started as a musician, what do you think about that? Is it an essential change or 
is it just a new way of doing things while well, it's the same thing it is a progressive approach just as life is you have to go with the changes that happen that occur and music is no different you know uh, it's just something that should not be resisted you know there are some uh, musical purists and artists who don't appreciate the technical uh, influence that music has had and they strictly jazz lovers or soul music lovers you know and that's fine but you know everybody has a right to approach music and life as they see fit what did you think making music was when you started out and has that changed and do you see it changing uh making music for me has always been the same and it is based on my creativity my inspiration um, i'm not an artist that concerns myself to great detail in regards to what other people are doing. I am aware of the advancements that music has made, technology, how it's influenced things. And, you know, I have recorded on my iPad music for my newest album. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I appreciate the ability to be able to do that, you know, because I don't play seven instruments or 17 instruments, you know, so I can utilize what's there for me to spark my creativity and build a foundation and then if I see fit to incorporate live musicians I can do that. Mm. OJ we're going to come back and ask you the same question in just a moment we're going to take a quick break you're watching on the record and we're talking about the future of work and uh, of course the music industry under the spotlight is it sustainable what changes are in the offing and are they going to be good or bad for the industry don't go away